So finally, the time has come that we get started with Kotlin coroutines. So I'm very excited to bring this series to you. And let's get started immediately by actually adding the dependencies to both Android Studio and to IntelliJ IDEA. And in this series, I will mostly be using IntelliJ, but I will also be using Android Studio to show some other examples. So let's get started immediately by going to this GitHub repository that says github.com slash kotlin slash kotlinx.coroutines. And of course, I will leave a link in the description below so you can just click on that. And once we arrive to this page, we want to scroll down to the Gradle section and we will get started by adding this to Android Studio. So we're gonna copy the implementation. And then of course, in your build.gradle file, you want to go to your dependency section and at the bottom, you will add it right below the other dependencies. And there's actually one more dependency you should add, Kotlin coroutines in Android Studio. And you can find this one just by scrolling down a bit down to the multi-platform section. You'll see it says Android and you will have this implementation for Android. So you'll copy that and you will paste it right below your other coroutines implementation. And then of course you need to remember to click on sync now and you will be ready to use this in your Android Studio project. Now let's go back to the Gradle section and to add this to IntelliJ, all we have to do is start by highlighting and just copying this address right here. And then we can go to our IntelliJ project and inside our IntelliJ project, we should go all the way up here to the top right hand corner and click on this folder with the small Tetris block. And inside here, we want to click on modules and make sure you go to this dependency section and then you'll see there's a plus down here. You will click on that. You will go to library and we will click from Maven. Then inside here, you can just add the Kotlin coroutines dependency and click on okay. It will give you this box over here and just click on okay. And then finally click on apply and you can finish by clicking on okay. Then it will say the following files were downloaded and everything will be ready to be used. Now let's get started by creating a sample project. So. The first thing we are going to do is create a log function and we're gonna create it right up here to keep things nice and tidy. So we're gonna do private function log and we're gonna write message of type string and that's going to equal a print line statement. Then we have to add some quotation marks and some brackets and inside these brackets, we are going to interpolate with some curly brackets and we are going to write in thread dot current thread dot name. And outside of these brackets, we are just going to insert our message. So what this log function does is it tells us which thread we are printing the message from and that will help us during our debugging. So we can just put that up there. And then in function main, we are going to create a function called network request. And right below we'll write private function network request. And inside here, we can finally get started with creating our very first coroutine. So what are coroutines by the way? Well, coroutines have been described as lightweight threads. So they are just essentially a way to simplify us using threads. Well, that being said, let's create our first coroutine. So let's write global scope dot launch. And this is used to launch a new coroutine in the background. And we will log that we are making a network request, making net work request. And inside here, we are going to create a for loop, which is going to simulate the program thinking. So we're gonna do I in one, two, three, and we are going to use another Kotlin function, which is called delay. And this is very similar to the sleep function, except this one does not block anything, it just suspends. And that means we can cancel it if we need to, and we will definitely dive into what that means later, but for now, just know that it delays. And we will print line first, and we need to interpolate the I. Then down below, we are going to write log and write first network request made. And that will take care of our first coroutine. Now, just to show you that we can actually launch two processes at the same time, we should copy and paste this and slightly edit it. So here we'll write making second network request and inside here we'll write second and second. But this time we are going to add a delay at the top of 500 milliseconds. So this one will start slightly later than this one up here. And you'll see that they will actually work at the exact same time. Then right below for this to actually work, we have to call thread.sleep. And we are going to insert 4000 milliseconds. So the program has enough time to actually terminate. And we will add a log that says done with an exclamation mark. And I'm gonna show you exactly why this is necessary, but for now we are just going to run the program. And you can see as soon as it launches, it starts the network request and the second one, and they start working at the same time. And then it says the first network request was made while the second one is still computing. And then the second network request was made. And then it says done. 
Now you may be wondering, so why did we have to add this thread.sleep? Well, we need to stop the program from actually finishing with this exit code because once it reaches this exit code, the entire program will terminate and these coroutines will stop. Every time we launch a coroutine, it decides to execute whatever's inside at its own pace inside a separate thread. And while that's being done, it skips to the next block. And since this one does the same thing as the first coroutine, it will start the coroutine and it will immediately skip to the next section. And without this thread.sleep, it will immediately skip to done. And once it reaches done, it will provide us the exit code. But since globalscope.launch is attached to the lifecycle of the application, it will completely die as we reach that exit code. So what we need to do is actually keep it alive. And to do this, you can either add a thread.sleep or you can add a while loop or whatever condition you have. You just need to keep the program from finishing with the exit code so it can actually successfully complete the code that's inside the coroutine. And I'm just gonna show you what happens if we remove this thread.sleep. So let's go ahead and click on play and you will see it will absolutely skip everything that we have worked so hard to create and it will just print out the statement done. And that is because this gets started so fast that it didn't even have time to create the log after the initial delay. And this one didn't even have a delay. That's how fast this program got executed. If you were to make the thread sleep for even 100 milliseconds, you will still get the first statement printed out because it will still have time to compute it, but nothing else will be computed and we will just get the making network request and done printed to the console. As you can see there, it tried to make the network request, but then the program finished and it gave us the exit code, which means all the coroutines were finished at the same time, regardless at where they were in the process. But with that being said, that's actually all I wanted to show you in this first coroutine video. In the next coroutine video, we'll be going over suspend functions. And after that, we will just continue exploring Kotlin coroutines more in depth. So you'll have a very clear understanding by the end of this series and you'll be able to use it both in Android Studio as well as IntelliJ. But as always, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.